topic three in logic is solving logic puzzles. Okay, so I'm going to start you with a Sudoku. So if you don't know the rules of a Sudoku, they get divided into three by three squares. Okay. And inside a three by three square, you must use the digits one through nine, all of them, and obviously none of them get repeated. In each row, you also must use the digits one through nine, none get repeated. And in each column, you must use the digits one through nine and no repeats. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through um, a little bit of lot logical way to do this. Uh, there's kind of two methods. So sometimes I go through one through nine and I look like this and I say, okay, in this box I need to put the one somewhere. So I can't have the one in this top and there's a one here so I can't put it in there, therefore it must go there. Okay, then in this this box, the one needs to go in the middle row, but it can't go here. So the one goes either there or there, but I can't make any conclusions because I, I don't know about this column or this column. Okay, so same here in this box. I know that the one has to go, see there's a one in this column and this column, so it goes in the last column and it can't go in this middle, so it would go here or here, but I can't make conclusions. And I kind of follow that um, with each number. So like two, I would go through, um, let me see here, two, 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 can't make any conclusions. So here, so in this box right here, there's a two on the top, the two on the bottom, so the two has to go in the middle, middle row, can't go down there, so here. Okay, um, here the two must go here because it is on a top, a bottom, so it's in the middle, but if I look up, I can't put it there or there. Okay, so I keep following and I do the same thing with threes. For instance, here in this box, the three can't go there. Looking up, the three can't go there, so therefore the three is there. And then in this box, then the three has to be in the middle, but if I look up, it can't be here, so there. Okay, um, some people like to do rows at a time as well. So for instance, if our columns, rows or columns, if I look at this, I have a one, two, three, four, five. So I need a six, a seven, and an eight. So I can't put the seven in that spot. I can't put the seven in that spot. So the seven would go there. Um, six or eight, six or eight. Can't make any conclusions. Okay, and you can do the same kind of thing with rows. Um, one, two, three, four. So I'm missing a five, a six, and a seven. Um, five. I could have a six or a seven there, a five or a six, five, six, or seven. So I didn't really get anywhere. Um, and some people like to work, see if they can find anything about a whole box at a time. So in this bottom box, I have a one, two, three. So I would need a four, five, six, and an eight. So Looking up here, I can't have a four or a five, so this is a six or an eight. Oh, and I already had a six or an eight in that, so now these must be a four and a five. The four can't go there. Okay, I am not gonna go through this all because it will take a long time, but here is the result. If you want to check your answer.
Okay, next one. Each member of a dance team does at least one dance, jazz, tap, or ballet. And then you uh, have a bunch of things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Venn diagram. And I will label this jazz, tap, and ballet. Okay, what you will do is start with the overlap of all three. So three members take all three dances. So that is a three right in the middle. Okay, now you, know you need to start with um, a conjunction of two of them. So for instance, eight members are in jazz and ballet. So jazz and ballet, you can see the overlap is that piece. And there needs to be eight in there, but there's already three, so then that's a five. Okay, now I found another one. Seven are in tap and jazz. So tap and jazz is right here, so there needs to be seven in there, so this needs to be a four. Okay, I have another one. Ten are in tap and ballet, so this is a seven, so that I can get ten in that. Okay, now I will the only thing I can do is this one. 25 members are in tap. So in this whole circle right here, so in that tap circle, I need to have 25. And I already have 14, so that means I have 11. Okay, so now I need an or statement with tap and something else. So I can use this one. 45 members are in tap or ballet. So tap or ballet would be all that circle and with all of this circle. So 11, so we already knew that was 25 and another five already is in there. So that's 30. So this is 15. And then 45 members are in jazz or ballet. So now I'm looking at all of these, 15, 20, 34. So I need a nine to get 43. So then how many members are on the dance team? I would add those all up, nine plus four plus three plus five plus 11 plus seven plus 15, and I get 54. Okay. Dan, Pete, Sally play hockey, golf, baseball, but not in that order. So we have to figure out which one each plays. Okay, so Dan, Pete, Sally. Hockey, golf, baseball. Okay, so to start, Pete doesn't use a ball. So Pete does not use a ball so we he can't be in golf or baseball so therefore Pete plays hockey so now I can also put X's on those Sally is friends with the baseball players sister so therefore Sally can't be the baseball player so she's the golfer which means Dan is the baseball player so Dan Baseball, Pete, hockey, and Sally is the golfer. Okay, next. You have a three digit number. All digits are different. So A, B, and C. The tens is three times the sum of the one and the hundreds. So the 10 is three times the sum of the one and hundreds. The number is less than 400. Okay, so what do I know about A? It's a three, a two, or a one. It's odd. So this is a one, three, five, seven, or nine. The sum of the tens and ones is five times the hundred. 
the sum of the tens and ones is five times the hundreds. Okay, so we can start figuring this out. So I know that B has to be three times something. Okay, so three, six, nine. In order for it to be three times something, so three times one would have given me a three, but these can't add up to one. Three times two would have given me a six, and there's no way that this can be a two because the only way for it to be a two would be if they were both ones, which can't happen. So therefore B is nine. Okay, so I do know this. Nine plus that is five times A. So if A was one, right, if A was one, this would have to be a negative number. Doesn't work. If A was two, that would be 10, so this would be one. And if A was three, this would have to be a six, which C can't be a six. So C has to be one and A has to be two. So 291. Okay, there are three chests. Each chest has a statement above it. Only one statement is correct, so which one contains the treasure? Okay, so let's just say if it was in here. So if the, if the treasure was in the red, what do our statements read? The treasure is in this chest, true. The treasure is not in this chest, that would be true. The tr treasure is not in the red, so that would be false. Only one statement is correct, so this does not work. Okay, what if the treasure was in the green? So this says the treasure is in this chest, that would be false. The treasure is not in this chest. That would also be false. The treasure is not in the red. That's true. That seems like it's going to work. I can test this one out just to make sure. If, uh, if it was in the brown, the treasure is in this chest. That's not right. The treasure is not in there. That's true. The treasure is not in there. That's also true. So therefore, it is in the green. Number six, you have a five liter pail and a one and a three liter pail. Explain how to get four from dumping them out. You don't have markings on the side of your pail. They're just pails with no measurements. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fill up my five. And I'm gonna pour it into the three. Okay, once I've poured the three out, I would have two liters left in this bucket. Okay, so now I'm going to empty this three out. So I have an empty three liter. I'm going to pour the two that are from here into here. Okay, now my five liter is empty. So I'm going to fill up my five liter all the way again. And then this is what I have right now in sitting in my three liter. So I'm going to take this and pour it to the top and that would mean one liter would come out. 
one liter. And how much would I have left? I would have four liters remaining.